Given two lines as described below, determine whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Then find the intersection point. And then the two lines are given as described in here. So before we get to do the problem in here, let's review a little bit about how do we know when the two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So um, say if we have two lines, right? Each of them will have a slope. Let's call it M1 and M2. The two lines are parallel to each other. Parallel if they have the same slope, meaning M1 equals to M2 because they have the same value of the slope, right? And the two lines would be perpendicular to each other. So perpendicular to each other, if and only if the two slope multiply to negative one. So I'm going to put M1 times M2, and that would equal to negative one. So for example, right, if the two lines are perpendicular to each other, then the first slope, say, for example, if the first slope is, I don't know, two, then it means that the second slope, it has to be the flip of it. So I'm going to flip it to be a, a half, and then it has to be, uh, it has to have a different sign. So it's going to be negative half. And if you want to check, two times negative half, it is equal to negative one, right? Another example in here is that, say, if the first slope, if the first line in here, it has a slope equal to, I don't know, 2 over 3, right? So then, to in order to find a slope that is up the line that is perpendicular to this given one, we have to flip it around. So 2 thirds, we're going to get 3 halves, right? And then we change the sign of it, right? Originally, if your slope is positive, then later on, your new slope would be a negative number, and vice versa. If originally your slope is a negative number, then later on, it's, it would be a positive number, okay? So then, let's talk about the real problem that we have for here, right? So in here, first step first, for part A, we have to find each slope. Is slope in here, right? So we have two lines. Uh, let's do the first line in red. Let me highlight it in red. It has two points, right? So let's call it x1 and y1 for the first point, and then x2 and y2 for the second point. So in order to find the slope of the first line here, we will do y2 minus y1, which is negative 1 minus 5 all over x2 minus x1, which is negative 5 minus negative 2, in parentheses like this. Right, and then the rest of the word we just have to put it in the calculator, right? So on top we're gonna get a negative six, and on the bottom you're gonna get a negative three. So negative six divided by negative three, we're gonna get a positive two, right? And then let me put back like the slow formula in here real quick before we forget it. So the slow formula I'm gonna put in purple in here. M equals two y two minus y one all divided by x two minus x one. And after that, we're going to do the same thing for the second slope. So let me put it in blue. So blue line here. We're going to do the same thing all over again. So the first point, we're going to assign x1 and y1. The second point, it would go x2 and y2, like this. Right? And then all we need to do is just we find a value of the slope by doing y2 minus y1, which is negative 5 minus negative 7 in parentheses. And then all over x2 minus x1, which is 3 minus negative 3 in parentheses like this, right? So you can put all this into the calculator, and you're going to get 7 minus 5 for the top one, so it's going to be a 2. And for the bottom one, you're going to get 3 plus 3, which is 6. So then one, um, 2 or th 2 over 6, we can simplify the fraction by dividing both top and bottom by 2. So we're going to get 1 over 3. Right, so now we're going to compare the slope that we're having in here, right? Are they parallel? Are they perpendicular to each other? How do we know that? Well, the first the first line has a slope of positive 2, and the second line, it has a slope of a third, right? So first of all, they are not parallel to each other because apparently these two slopes are not equal to the same value, right? 2 is not a third, right? So they're not parallel. How about perpendicular, right? So you, what we're going to do in here is that we're going to multiply m1 and m2, so 2 times a third, if you put it in a calculator, is going to give you 2 over 3, which is not negative 1, right? So in here, these two lines are neither parallel or perpendicular to each other. So that's why I'm going to put the word neither. So neither parallel or perpendicular, okay? So the two line in here, this one is a symbol for parallel, okay? 
or perpendicular to each other, I'm going to put the symbol of perpendicular like this. Okay, but if you want to, you can put it in words, right? So you can write neither parallel or perpendicular. Okay, so that's the first part of the problem. The second part, we have to find the intersection point. And in order to do that, well, we have to find each line. And the formula to a linear equation, we have y equals to mx plus b. In here, right, x and y is representing a point, right? A point always has two values. The first value is the x and the second value is a y. And the m, it is the slope that we find for each line. That's why I have m1 and m2. Okay, so now let's get in. Uh, let's get to um, each line. So getting back to the first line, I'm gonna use red in here, right? So I'm gonna pick. I, I I'll say the first point. Okay, it doesn't matter which point that you pick. You can go with the first point. You can go with the second point. It really doesn't matter. The goal in here is that we're gonna get B by plugging in X Y and M into the cyan color equation in here, and then we're gonna get the official line after we plug in M and B back to it. So let's get to it. First line first in red, right? So I'm gonna go with the first point. Let me put a check in there, right? So then the y value it is five, and then equals the m value is two. We have it in here, and then the x value of the first point is negative two, and then continue with the formula. We have plus b, right? So in here, if you want to take it slow, you can do five equals negative four plus b, and then adding four to both sides, you're gonna get b equals to positive 9. Okay, so the equation of the line here, it would be y equals the m in here, the slope is 2, the x is just x, and the b, which is 5 from the previous line, it is a positive 9. Okay, so this is the first line, red. The second line, let's do the same thing all over again. Okay, so I'm going to pick, I don't know, the second point, just to have a different flavor, right? So let's get to it, right? So y, it equals to negative 5, and then equals, and then the slope that we have from the previous uh, step, we have a third for the slope. And then we have x equal to positive 3. And then we have plus b, right? So let's take it slow. So if you do the math, 1 third times 3, you're going to get a 1. And then we have plus b in here. So to solve for b, we're going to minus 1 on both sides. And then minus 5, minus 1, it would be a negative 6 for the value of b. So let's put everything together. We're going to get y equals a third for the slope and then x and then minus 6 for the b spot from the previous line. So we have the two equations for the two lines already, right? In order to find the intersection point in here, right, what we're going to do is that we're going to set the right-hand side of the two linear equations in here to be equal to each other. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. And then I'm going to put 2x plus 9 for the right side of the first equation to be equal to the right-hand side of the second equation, which is 1 over 3x minus 6, right? So now all we need to do is that we're going to solve for x, right? And then that's the plan, right? And after we get the x value, the question is asking for an intersection point. And as we all know, a point comes in two values, x and y. So once we get the x value, we're going to plug it into either the first line or second line here. And then that's how we get to the y value. And then we're going to put the x and y together to, get, to write as a point. Okay? So let's do the procedure in here. Let's move on in here. So first thing first, I'm going to minus a third of x from both sides. So minus a third and an x on both sides. And I'm going to get... What, 2 minus a third, we're going to get 6 over 3 minus 1 over 3, which is 5 over 3. So I'm having 5 over 3. X plus 9 equals 2, negative 6. Okay? I want to solve for X only, right? So what I'm going to do in here is that I'm going to minus 9 on both sides. So let me put it in black. So minus 9 on both sides. After this step, I'm going to get 5 over 3x equals negative 15, right? So these are canceled, and previously, these are canceled out too, okay? So at this step in here, right, if you want to get the x by itself, you're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 5 over 3, which is 3 over 5. So I'm going to times each side by 3 over 5 like this, 
right? And then after that, I'm going to get my x equals negative 9, right? And you can put the whole thing into the calculator. You don't have to do it by hand if you don't want to, if you don't need to, right? Let me put it more in line here. So like what we talked about earlier, after you get the x value, you have two options. You can plug it back into the first linear equations in here, or you can plug it back into the second linear equation in here so that you get the y value, right? I hate fractions and I hate negative numbers, so let's stick with the first value. Let's stick with the first equation in red, okay? I'm going to put it back in red in here. So we go y equals, and then 2 is the slope, the x in here, which is half from the previous slide, it equals to negative 9, right? And then plus 9 after that, right? We just copy and paste out the exact same equation that we have in red for the first linear equation. And we're just plugging x equal to negative 9 in it, right? So for all of this, we just have to plug it into the calculator. So 2 times negative 9, you have a negative 18 plus 9. That would be a negative 9, right? So as a point, final answer as a point, you're going to have to write as x comma y, Right, so the first value is for x, it's going to be negative 9, and the second value is also negative 9. And this is it. This is there in the section point.